Hey Raghunath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kostuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archive classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Soul Farm. This is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Kostuba Das. Welcome to the show, everybody. Welcome to Sleeping Saturday, Q&A weekend, live, live Q&A. We're here with about 40 uh, Wisdom Kirtan fans and uh, at Super Soul Farm, and uh, we're trying it in the kitchen of the uh, yogi house today, see how it goes. And we're going to do live, live questions. If you're new to the show, welcome. If you're listening on Facebook, welcome. This is uh, our regular study of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And on weekends, we do Q&A. And because we're doing a retreat at the farm this week, we're going to bring some live questions up. And um, by the way, and if you are listening to this for the first time, you can hear this podcast on a regular basis wherever you get podcasts or YouTube. We're up there. And remember to like, comment. And most of all, share with people. We want everybody to hear this message of the Srimad Bhagavatam. It's really transformational. How are you, Kastuba? Doing good, Raghunath. Everything good there in New York City? We miss you here. No complaints. We miss you here. We had a shelf for you to sleep on. <laughs> all right. We had a cot up by the pond for you. but you... Camping, Kastuba. We got to get you camping. You don't seem like the camping type. Ever been camping? Uh, yeah, no. kind of, kind of, <laughs> you, you kind of camped Does that mean you <laughs> fell in your car. What was it? <laughs> I don't have a car. <laughs> <laughs> fell asleep on the subway. It's sort of camping. <laughs> Sleeping in the park. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Miss Mara, any good announcements for us today? Uh, we got back to recovery group meetings today at 9.30 and noon, I believe. And uh, Nityananda Chandra's shloka memorization class is at 10 a.m. Are we doing a Q&A day tomorrow? Is that our plan? You're doing another live, live Q&A day tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Yes, we you are. You got to point your mic a little more towards your mouth there, Mara. I think. Mara. Okay. There you go. There you I'm going to give up my mic to the questioners. All right. Yeah, <laughs> other people more qualified than me. Yeah. So we're here with Bali and Dunya. From Alachua, they're both, you know, Dunny is our, rep our, our regular guest. Whenever we can't answer questions, we bring her on. She's a, a trained therapist, family counselor, etc. Um, so we've got some uh, questions from the crew today. Um, do you have the names with the questions yet? Oh, wait. Oh, hi, Dunny. How are you? Good morning. <laughs> Talk right into the microphone. I know you're a little taller than me. You got to, yeah, you got to hunch over like me. Make it, make it look. And that looks like How the news you? team or something. Yes. Hello, Danya. <laughs> looks like we're interrogating you. Hi, I thought you were going to be here. I did too. <laughs> yeah, everyone's like, everyone's like, where's Kostuba? Where's Kostuba? And I said, we got rid of him. We're going to say, yeah, 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 we got space up here, kind of, um, you know, like in the garage, there's underneath the car, there's like right where that oily the car. We have a dolly, you can slide it right under. You can go right there or... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in Ooh, the it's chimney. Packed. It's, it, it's packed here. It's packed here. How you how are you liking the farm, Donnie? It's your first time here with I the think kids. It's awesome. I grew up in the city in Caracas in Venezuela. So in Caracas. Farms are like 
fascinating and a little bit i'm like is, is everything okay is are we gonna get a splinter is or you know so it's um a lot of splinters out here you gotta be careful well and you gave the tick speech so i was like the baby the speech <laughs> the babies the ticks coming <laughs> toddling in covered in ticks ah, mama. the tick got mama. me last time i was up there remember Rugger? Oh, man. I actually yeah. I didn't tell the babies this because I didn't want to freak them out. But I, I saw Bali and I was like, do you is this like some what is that? I pulled the tick off of his. Oh, gullet? is that what this is called? <laughs> gullet. Like gullet. under chin area. And I just yeah. under it chin. And I was like, We're at that age where we have under chins. <laughs> I think we need I think we need a lot under chins. I think we need a little more volume on Dunya's mic or, or pull the mic closer. One of one of the two. Yeah, you got to pull it closer. We're 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 at the appropriate okay. levels. Okay. The Mara made a fuck. Is but is your right. level Ooh. is your level lower than her level, Rona? They're the same. Yeah, we, we see are them. The we're not we appropriate because you're louder. I just can't figure out which I is think which at this point. Might be a natural thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. So the mic's got to make up for it. <laughs> All right, so you got the questions and the people that we can bring up to ask the questions. You got the names next to the questions, Kostuba? I do. First okay, one you, uh, First one was from Happy Jack Yoga. Happy Jack Yoga, let's bring him down, Harry Ball. Come on down, Happy Jack. All right, so so yeah, so you're going to you're just going to scoot over. Happy Jack's going to take this mic. <laughs> Happy Jack, uh, what's your backstory, Happy Jack? Talk right into the microphone. Namaste. Nice to see you, Kastuba. Nice to see you, Jack. Happy so Jack. So my, my backstory, I, I guess I, I'm a slow learner. 2010, I was given a copy of the Gita by a devotee, uh, but I wasn't ready for it. And so, you know, it sat on my shelf, gathered dust. Mm -hmm. In 2012, I took a one-way trip, trip, uh, trip to India, mm -hmm. spent a year there, ended up in Vrindavan, Wow. Uh, but I didn't have a, I didn't have a leader. I should have been on pilgrimage. So I was, you know, I wasn't ready for that. It was a little bit weird. So I spent most of the time in Rishikesh. Mm. Uh, but then in 2020, uh, I was preparing for grad school and I uh, spending some time with Professor Edwin Bryant. Oh, yeah. We and, love him. Yeah. Great guy. And I mean, really, I, I was there because I wanted I wanted his support to get into grad school. And he did get me in. But he also had me fall in love with Bhakti. Mm -hmm. So I really fell in love with that through class, got to meet Kula. Kula told me about the Bhakti Center, showed up at the Bhakti Center. John of Preeti was there, who I know is on with us oh, right yeah. now. He had the biggest, the, the most high vibes, beautiful smile, uh, handed me a postcard of Wisdom of the Sages. Oh, look at that. Here we are. Wow. What a great story. Mm -hmm. What a great story. Well, welcome to the show. How can we serve you today? So the question I have, um, you know, the, I, it, I've just been doing bhakti, I guess, for the last few years and, you know, slowly, you know, opening my heart and doing the practice more. I've been chanting 16 rounds for four months now and, okay. and living the, the four regulative principles. And so it seems like, you know, a, a natural next step, perhaps one day is initiation. And I feel though, like it's, it's obviously, it's a big decision. Um, I know I'm not ready yet and, and different people that I've talked to, you know, some, you know, some devotees are very encouraging, you know, of course, yes, it's, you know, it's, it's a logical next step. It's really, really important. I do appreciate that I've never been pressured. You know, it's, people are just, you know, take your time. But I've also met some people, you know, people who love me, people who know me that I can be very enthusiastic, overly enthusiastic and, you know, jump sure. into this, jump into that. So, you know, encouraging me to take my time. And, and I've met other people who, who straight up say, you know, don't do it, you know, because they've, <laughs> <laughs> they've they've done it and they ended up choosing someone that fell down and so you know perhaps they have a trauma with that and so i guess you know i hear all these different voices mm. clear as clearly i'm in my head as i'm sharing all of this and um, but i feel no pressure i'm in no hurry but i guess my question is how how do you know if you should take initiation good question chanting 16 rounds for four months chanting really works doesn't it just chanting japa is very powerful isn't it it is if I, if, I, if I can just read really quick, uh, Kastuba, you said this a couple of days ago, and it really resonated when, I, when I'm chanting Japa. Speak right in here. It said, uh, you said, there's no better place in the world to be than right here, right now, doing exactly what I'm doing. Mm. And, and that's how I feel when I'm doing my practice. And, and th you know, going back to what you say, Raghu, about it makes no material sense. You know, I'm up at 4 a.m. Everybody <laughs> else in my town is sleeping. 
you know, I'm, I, some, my, you know, my family, they go to sporting events and stuff. And I'm like, this feels good. This feels right. It's like, I don't know. So I'm going to keep doing it. Um, but yeah, it, it works. Yeah. Uh, Kostubi, you want to go first with this? It's a good question. Okay. Yeah. You know, when you know, re- it's, when you know it's ready, is it, re- is it sure? Is he being rajasic? Is he jumping into things? These are things that need to, you know, take time and then percolate before you just, uh, they say fools rush in. Well, you know, in one sense, it's a question that um, we could spend the entire show on. It, it, it's important. It, it's this, this idea of initiation into the Hare Krishna mantra into the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya, the, the lineage. It's a, uh, it's, you know, it's so many things at once. It's in one sense, it's um, a very powerful thing. It's a very beautiful thing. It can be the most natural thing in the world, but it's also in a, in another sense, it's a very delicate thing. You know, um, it, it's the, the, the faith is that, God speaks through the Vedic texts and human beings can become living representatives of those texts and can connect you to God through them, through the, through the practices that are provided there and guide you, stand, serve as an example and guide you how to best most benefit from it and a commitment is made between the guru and the disciple the 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 guru is committing i'm 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 accepting personal responsibility to guide you on this path to its completion and the the disciple is making the commitment i i'm i'm committing to you having made have you having taken that grave responsibility I'm committing to you to faithfully follow your instructions. And it's, it's a, um, it's a, in one sense, it can be the most simple and natural and effective path, but it, it also becomes very delicate too. And in, in, in the sense that there's such a potential for disappointment, um, whether the guru will represent it well, or whether the disciple, will um lose interest you know uh you, you know next month uh and, and in one sense uh to ask to 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 um formally enter into that agreement and then to casually walk away from it um is uh, i'm not sure what word i'm looking for but it's it's unfortunate in any case whatever it is and we see that happen we see both things happen. It's like we're a in, marriage. Yeah. Yeah. And we're in the Kali Yuga and in the Kali Yuga, everything's difficult. You know, everything's challenging. It's challenging for, for, to find gurus that will represent it. Well, it's, it's challenging to find disciples that will, um, practice it. Well, the whole thing is, is challenging. And, and, and you, and you could shine light on a, you know, a thousand examples of, you know, negative examples and, you could shine light on thousands of beautiful examples mm. where 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 it's worked so well and, and so on. So I, I just share. I, I suppose I just share that background just to shine some light on it. But but let's let's look. What, what the way that you speak? I, I'm I'm feeling my my um. I don't know if intuition is the right word, but hearing you speak just even just from what you just said in the you know in your little introduction to your question i felt like this person is serious this person is sober this person's not approaching it in a um superficial way like a novelty many, yeah novelty or or like let's say um kind of colored by a personality cult kind of vibe mm. um it seems to me like you're soberly approaching this. You, you're already disciplining yourself as a disciple would, as a faithful disciple would, practicing as a faithful disciple would. Um, 
it, the guru is going to look to see if, if you have the capability to do that for a certain period of time, you know, likely before they make that, make, you know, enter into that agreement. But, you know, the, if we boil your question down to how does one know if and when they should be initiated, you have to really want it. You have to say, you know, when I was initiated, when Roganath was initiated, you, you see, here, 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 here's this, this simple formula. And it's, as, it's, it's what I said before. This is how God works. He puts his message in, in books like Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. He invests his message in those texts. And then he says, and then to benefit from them, you learn them from a person who exemplifies them and teaches them and, and guides one how to practice the, 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 the practices and understand the truths that are there. It, that's how it works. It works through a person, through the texts, and, the, and that's a, a line to, to hold on to and to connect. Um, and then, and then through the lineage, rites are created. You understand? Rites meaning like uh, you know, like um, rituals are created to to um, to help it sink in. To, to guard it and to intensify it and so on. So therefore you have like the, the, the ceremony of the initiation, you know, wherein you, you're reborn, you know, it's like a rebirth. It's like a baptism. It's like, you know, you're, you, so the whole, you get a new name, right? It's not like a new name is essential, but a new name is there to, to, to kind of like deep, more deeply instill that feeling. I'm, I'm, I'm entering a new life, you know? Mm -hmm. And then you would start to wear the tea lock at that point, you know, traditionally, you know, uh, the, I'm a new person and, and, and I, you know, and, I, and I'm representing this all the time and, um, and so on, you know, you'd be given the beads, N not the same beads, a new set of beads that your gurus chanted on, you know, I'm okay, now I will, you know, with this, with a new commitment and a new series. So all the rites are kind of built into that ceremony to, to give you to, to instill more deeply within both guru and disciple, the birth of this commitment, the, the new birth and entry into this lineage and all of that, it, all of that's there. But the most essential thing is the spiritual instructions and practices and your ability to follow them with faith, you know, and, and diligently and that commitment to, to, to do it. If you feel like I'm ready to commit to that, that's what I want that's become my top priority in my life that, that through this i'll become a better person i'll be you know and and i will um and i will through through this path i'm ready i'm ready to i'm ready to say that this is my path for life i'm ready to say that this person is the person that i've accepted as a as as a primary guide for me in following this you have to feel that with an intensity um in a confidence and I, you know, and I'll say this practically the most simple person could be inspired by another individual and knowing very little say, I'm ready to follow and achieve the goal through that. That's, that's, that's possible. When I was initiated, I knew very little about what a guru was or <laughs> I didn't know very much, but, you know, my, but I, I was inspired by my guru. Um, but ideally, the disciple should really know what they're what this is and what they're getting into, you know, and and um, therefore the study is there. What is this lineage? What is unique about this? Can I answer these questions? What is the name of this lineage? <laughs> you know, um, uh, you know, who are the important figures in it? What is unique about it? You know, why is it special? I, I, ideally, I would want to be educated on all of that. And, and, and how does this process work? You know, I would want to be educated in all of that. And, and so you're doing that. Um, you may want to do that more. That's, that's all important. Um, but combined with that, you, bef before you commit to an individual in that way, okay, you're accepting me, I'm also accepting you. There should be a, a feeling of um, kind of like an intense gratitude 
when I'm with you, when I hear from you, it's opening up for real. I'm getting it. You know, when I see how you live and when I hear the words that you speak, it ignites something in my heart. It, it kind of explodes in my mind and my heart that, yes, this person has opened, opened up the, you know, the truth. They've re they're revealing the truth that's in these texts. And when it comes through, when it comes through their mouth, when it comes through their example, it ignites in me, you know, um, I, that I think that's also very important. And, and, and they have a genuine concern for me and a genuine affection for me that I can feel all these things, you know, are, are part of it. So that that commitment becomes cemented, you know, it, it very strong. Um, so I don't know, these are just some thoughts, you know, mm -hmm. I'm sure you have some, some important thoughts, Rogana. I have some thoughts. He can decide if they're important or not, but <laughs> I, I've heard it described, uh, by teachers in my life that, uh, you know, there's, it's like the, the Diksha Guru, the one who's giving you the holy name, um, and having you connected with the lineage, they're sort of like a general. And they're the general is saying, okay, we're storming Normandy. We're going in this direction. And then you, Krishna also tags other people in your life to help with your personal direction. Sometimes the initiating guru, we don't have that much association with, or they live in a remote place. We, we, we get, uh, we listen on YouTube or we listen to some lecture that was recorded. Some of us have the good fortune of living near them or we have that uh, association on a regular basis. But for the most part, they're putting us in a direction and then there'll be people on the ground, you know, captains, you know, you know, master sergeants who are like directing us. What do you, and it's not like we're trying to just like, now I've got, now I've got my name. Now I can just do what the heaver the hell I want. We want to be instructed when we're, we're, we're di di disciple means we want discipline. I want to know how to refine my behavior so I can make advancement. So there, the Krishna will tag certain people in your life that you can go to and say, you know what? I like the way you walk. I like the way you talk. I like the way you move in this world. What do you think about me? What do you think about my choice here? What do you think about me doing this? Do you think this is a healthy thing or a bad thing? I'm going through this fork in the road. Should I go north or south? So it's not like I'm going to bring all my stuff necessarily to my initiating guru anyway. But I think it is important to make a commitment to your lineage if, if you're in that mindset. You can also be part of this community and just say, you know what? I love Kirtan. That's good with me. I don't need to, you know, I don't need to formally make any vows. I love Kirtan. It makes me feel good. But what will happen naturally is, and this happens to me, but it happens, we we want to, the desire to upgrade is always there. It's, it's like those little things on your computer that says time to, you know, update your operating system. It'll always be there. It'll always encourage us to upgrade on a regular basis to the, to the degree that I get dialed in to hearing and chanting appropriately. I want to serve more. I want to hear more. I want to be, I, I, I don't want downtime. In my, I want to like sort of sl start to slice Maya less in my life. I don't want my life to be filled with Maya and peppered with Krishna. I want my, I want the, the, the Maya to be peppered into my full on Krishna life, you know? So um, we, we end up flipping that, but you can't rush that on anybody. Everybody's got their own karma they're coming into this world with. When I hear Happy Jack's story, I will just say this guy is actually a very focused guy. And I, I feel like he's not whimsical. He's taking things seriously. I, I think the way you said that, it will be a natural step for you. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for everybody. I think people do things rajasically, meaning they, 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 they rush into things. They have no idea what they're getting into. You know, let's get married and buy a house or what, stuff like, you know, when it, it, you just met this person, you know? So it, it, you got to really think these things through. But if you do think them through, and if you've really thought life through, to me, I don't regret ever getting initiated. And I think it was the, one of the most beneficial things in my life. And I felt it really um, surcharged my uh, spiritual practice as well. So uh, guru is not, and, and, and as far as your other question, and this is a big thing because 
especially if we've had people that have hurt us or abandoned us in our life. There, ten, there is a tendency to carry the narrative that people will abandon me, people are untrustable, and that is the narrative I'm going to carry with me. And guess what? People are fallible. People fall down. But when you're making a commitment to a person like as a guru, and if, it, if you always have this thing, well, my guru could fall down. Guess what? Really, we're making our commitment to Krishna, our commitment to Krishna. And if whatever this person is in your life, and suppose they do fall away themselves, Krishna still used them to speak to you and touch your, your heart. And therefore, you should never, you should feel for, if anything, you should feel for them. You should appreciate them and just say, you know what? They were overwhelmed by whatever shortcomings they had. Believe me, it sounds really attractive to be a guru. I was a guru when I was 19 years old because I was a singer and I had 10,000 followers or thousands, tens of thousands of followers a teenager. And it's not a good thing. It's a pain in the ass. It, it, it's exhausting. Everyone wants to, ha to hang all over you, bug you, you know, take a photo with me. You know, it's, it's like to be a guru or to be a leader is a pain in the neck. It's not like, okay, you get your ego stroked and, you know, you know people give you gifts. Who cares? You know what I mean? And so it's like any parent knows to have children is a huge investment of time and energy. It's exhausting. Um, but you do it because you love kids. You, you like to care, you like to care for others, et cetera. So there's some like nurturing involved. And some people have that tendency to lead and to teach and they take up that service. They see it as a service. And if they have some shortcomings, you know what? That's their problem. They're trying their best. And you've n lost nothing. You've lost nothing. Krishna sees your sentiment and your sincerity. But don't use their shortcomings, the teacher's shortcomings, to be an excuse to say, ah, this whole thing is a this whole thing is a farce. I'm gonna go back into Maya. No, then you then you've cheated yourself. So uh, we, we got to be careful of that because I see it again and again. We want to resent. My narrative is I want to resent and not trust anybody. And that's just a way. Uh, I find that just not a good way to approach life in general. I love it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I guess, um, no, thank you both for that. I guess, you know, one of the things you said, Kastuba, is and what I recognize in myself is I'm becoming a better person. You know, and I still got a long way to go, but I think, you know, even my parents who, who don't know everything that I'm up to in this Bhakti path, but they, <laughs> they can see I'm becoming a better person and I'm, and, uh, it feels right. Um, of course, the next big question is who is the right spiritual teacher to choose? And that's, that's another, I won't open that question right now, but, mm. you know, so I'm just reading the books and, uh, but I think like what you said, Raghu. The, the Shastra, the Kirtan, the Sad, and all of that feels right. So if at some point it feels right to choose a, a teacher, then, then that'll happen. But all the rest feels right for now. Thank you. Happy Jack, Harry Ball. Let's hear it for Happy Jack. Ooh. Uh, we're, we're getting messages at the guest microphone volume. I just turned it up. Okay, I just great, turned it up. I think we'll need Dunya's help on the next question, but why don't we bring the questioner up? Then that's Patrick Heffernan. Patrick Heffernan, Harry Bowl. Come on down, Patrick. Patrick's a local. Patrick's a yoga teacher. He's a local here at Super Soul Farm. He's part of our community. Um, I think you've even done Q and A live before, haven't you? I have. Can you speak <laughs> right into the mic? Because it's he's, yes. He's he he. Patrick is a actor as well, an actor and a singer. And uh, he doesn't realize this or not, but Chris has got a divine plan for him. And I've watched this guy transform and it's quite beautiful to see you go through all your phases. And I'm, I'm waiting to see you do. I'm waiting for the day that you do Krishna conscious drama. We should start an upstate musical Bhagavatam drama team. What do you say? Say no more. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got our company right here. <laughs> Okay, when you want to ask your Ruggenau's question, Ruggenau's kind of like uh, Lucy, just like she he wants to get in on it. <laughs> well, I want to get in on the. Oh, you want to be in the show? show. <laughs> Let me get in the show. 
Uh, I'm going to read my question, actually, because it's a bit somber. So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Hari Bol, my question today comes from a broken heart for two of my dear friends who've been expecting their second child. Earlier this week, the mother went into labor, and late Tuesday night, the baby was delivered, stillborn. Mm. It's been hard to wrap my head around, and I can only imagine what the family is going through. What I'm struck by, though, is that within minutes of my hearing the news, I started hearing Bhagavad Gita running through my mind. Never was there a time when I did not exist, nor you. The soul is indestructible. It is not born and does not die. The embodied soul passes from one body to the next. And I can't stop thinking about the soul of that little one, that soul's path, and how that path has intersected with our paths, the parents' paths. And it struck me that even though we didn't get to meet this soul in its baby form, that our lives aren't untouched by that soul's presence here. In fact, profoundly the opposite is true. That soul's path has deeply touched our lives. Here are some of my questions. Is this radical? Is this kind of radical tragedy not the deepest type of spiritual purification? Doesn't this storyline appear many times throughout the Vedas and Bhagavatam? And how can I best support my friends at this time, knowing the, the deep truths that the Gita is speaking here, while also honoring the appropriate ritual of mourning and, and grieving that, that would be necessary here? Wow. Power, powerful question. And just hearing how you say, you know, the Bhagavad Gita is running through mind. Uh, our mind during this what a way to frame out tragedy what a helpful useful way to frame out tra tragedy and, and of course people without that uh frame of reference how how tra how actually tragic it is the whole thing's tragic but if you have no grip on the concept of eternality bodies are always changing then then you're left just with tragedy. And you could be the greatest friend right now. Um, I'd love to hear what Dunya says. Let's bring Dunya on for this one. We're lucky we have her here live, live. Hello, Dunya. Hi. What do you do with that? Well, I mean, I appreciate so much. I think it's less of a question and more, it sounds like a realization. Like mm -hmm. the way that you were framing it as Raghu is saying it's already within the context of your understanding through bhakti and what's amazing about that is that that dichotomy of like am I a transcendentalist and do I understand this through shastra or scripture or revelation or do I go through the you know the rituals of mourning and stuff it's it becomes non-contradictory there's no separation your mourning process involves all of that right it's incorporated you're integrating things that happen in life Tra i mean life is tragedy life is death life is stillbirth life is you know for for a for a mother the moment that we become pregnant the realization that life is fragile is built into mm. the pre pregnancy itself so it's it's a realization that some of us carry perhaps on a on a cellular level the second that we conceive a child and then for other people it's something that we realize through these happenings of life so your integration of how do i bring in the spiritual principles that i've been taught like this is where the like uh, what is it the rubber meets the pavement mm -hmm. Because everything is theory until something happens, right? Everything that we've been taught and all the kirtans that we go to and all the classes and the way that our guru inspires us and all the wisdom of the sages lectures and, you know, all these things, it's all theory until life happens. And then when life happens, our subject actually informs us that the fact that all these things came to you sort of unbidden, like you weren't like, what well, Gita verse would be amazing to share with these parents right now right. that'd be so mechanical and it's actually a lot of people sometimes try and force that and it comes off as like very trite and it comes off as inappropriate actually like let me just flip through this well i know you're suffering but have you read that it's the worst it's the worst mm. rather what happened is your subconscious that is full of impressions that have naturally changed the the color of your heart came to the surface as a way of soothing you and because it's genuine in you, then you have the capacity to soothe these parents that you're so close to, because it's real. If it's not authentic, your soothing won't work, actually. Mm. It'll come off as fake. It'll come off as superficial. It'll come off as you rushing a process of mourning that shouldn't be rushed. So 
the most important thing is to feel that grief and see what comes up authentically. And sometimes that means sitting and crying with somebody. Sometimes that means holding somebody's hand. Sometimes that means summoning a funny memory because it's what came to your mind. Sometimes it's just being in the question. How can I serve you? How can I support you? How can I be here for you at this time? Right? Or even just speak what you feel or what you see this is so painful this is so hard this is so unexpected i don't know how to feel mm. Do you, you know you don't seem to know how to feel and that's okay too and in your mind and in your heart you can keep that meditation of like wow these impressions are really coming to me right this is my shelter this is the way that i understand how to process what's happening so i i appreciate so much everything that you shared i think it's really powerful mm. you know um if i could share something uh and again, I think what you said was important about how to deal with those who are grieving. But um, one way to uh, fill in the blanks of the framing it out, I always, I oftentimes tell the story of the Vasus in the beginning of the Mahabharata who were cursed to take birth on earth. And because they begged for forgiveness, Ganga Devi said, I will immediately liberate them. And so one of them, they did something naughty in this in the in a celestial realm they stole a cow but the one who actually stole the cow he was cursed to live a long time and the other ones were cursed to be born on earth but immediately be liberated so the ones that were born were taken gunga Devi took her and throw the threw the babies in the ganges so in this world those babies that were thrown in the ganges we were like oh my god what a horrible tragedy when in fact, those were the ones that were fortunate. Those were the ones that were blessed. They were born and then immediately liberated. Yet the one who got to live the long time, now we see it from our vantage point. Oh, that fortunate child, he lives a long life. Yeah, he lived a tortured life. He lived a long, tortured life. Grandfather Bhishma was tortured throughout his whole life, basically. His whole kingdom and dynasty fell apart. There was a world war going on and he died on a bed of arrows. Fortunately, he died seeing Krishna. But the point is that sometimes tragedy from our vantage point seems tragic, but on a bigger vantage point, this child just had to do, do a little time, take some, take birth. And who knows where this soul was coming from? This soul could be a very, very special soul that needs to take one more. Guess what? The material world is tragic, period. With all the wonderful experiences, you know, the birth of a child or marriage, or prom night, whatever, all the wonders of the world, you know, the, I visited the Grand Canyon, all that stuff. It's also tragic too. Tragic things happen in this world. And sometimes they happen when you're 95, sometimes when you're just born. But if you understand, like, maybe we're just doing a little time, doing burning off a little karma, and then some, you don't know where these souls are coming from and how evolved they are. We don't know who's right across the table from us. And so um, all we can do is ourselves is take care of ourselves. And we're calling people into our lives, either through birthing them out of our bodies or calling other people closer to us. And um, uh, we, we are radiating that spiritual universe around us. And so whatever we do with ourselves in our own spiritual life, that's affecting everybody in our universe. Our family members, friends, our, you know, our, uh, our, our parents, our children, et cetera. Um, so we don't know where the soul is coming from. And there's every chance that they just had to just burn some karma off. Now I wouldn't drop that on them, you know, in just a, you know, a sophomore way. I would, if I was to say that I'd wait till that grieving would be done or something, but that's one way I look at it. When I, when I hear of of tragedy why did that happen that kid didn't deserve that etc we don't know the journey of the soul because hmm? you want to share it's a big question yeah um i i think danya shared really good advice regarding how to support your friends um and i think you're speaking to kind of the mystery that's behind it which you know the mystery there's, there's, there's a mystery to life in general, even as faithful bhakti yogis, we, we feel like, hey, we've got the key, right? Like, 
we've got the understanding about how the whole thing works. Right. We understand why we're here. We understand, you know, we understand what it's what we're meant to realize, and we understand a path to deepen the realization of that. We're we're, we're given it all. It's it's like it's incredible. Still, so much of life is a mystery. You know, what do we know and what do we not know? We know that this child, although, um, you know, although has passed on already, we know that they're they're alive somewhere, and that there was a reason, that there there was a purpose. We don't know exactly what that purpose was. You know, um, but we know general truths about this. Not we don't know the specific truth, but we know general truths about this. And, and and one thing that Patrick brought up is he asked, "Is this kind of radical tragedy not the deepest type of spiritual purification?" Hmm. And you know, as as we age as bhakti practitioners, hopefully we deepen in our wisdom, and that wisdom. You know, it, it plays out in a couple of ways. You know, it, one way that it plays out is we become, hopefully we become better at interpreting our lives circumstances, l- understanding what it is that we're meant to learn through it. And and, and then, so what bec- What was, it, I, I really uh, appreciated uh, Dunya's, um, we got to steal this one, Raghunath, that it's all just theory until life happens, right? I'm ready. I'm, I'm- it, it, and and so yeah. in a sense it's like it's the, yeah, then the rubber hits the road it's yeah it, it's like and you know in in a um and we were talking about i think the other day we had a, a one of our episodes was titled something like uh painful life experience plus spiritual knowledge you know equals spiritual realization right or you know if you have a test tube in the laboratory you got ingredients in the tube and then you put that bunsen burner underneath it right and you heat it up and then there's a chemical reaction and so those chemical reactions, the, the, the heat that we have in this life, it can seem so painful. It can seem so brutal. Um, and, and really the, the, the experience of a, of a mother going through what your friend went through, I really can't even begin to imagine the emotional oh, weight of that, to, 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 the, the, what it feels like to have another human being in your body completely dependent on you. Uh, the anticipation of the birth of that child and the joy that you'll experience. And then, and then at the moment of the great joy, it, it turns out to be a crushing moment of pain. Um, we don't know exactly why, you know, we, we, we don't know that. We don't know exactly why the mother is meant to experience that. We don't know exactly why the child was meant to experience that, but in a more general sense, we do know that this is how God does work, right? That we are given theory and then we're giving, we're given life experience. And, and you know, when that life experience comes, that painful, tragic experience, there's two ways to respond. One way is that it weakens our faith in God. But, you know, why would God put me through this? But really what we were taught is that it's really meant to weaken our faith in the material world. Ooh, I like that. Right. And, and so, so that whatever that, whether it's losing a child like this or uh, losing a loved one or s- this type of disappointment or that type of disappointment, this kind of tragedy or that kind of tragedy, hopefully as we become wiser, we, th- these things actually feel like an exhausting um, very trying experience that you feel gratitude for because you realize it's breaking my connection, my faith, my clinging to this world. Hmm. And so when you get that, the most painful tragedy you become the most grateful for. You know, like that's what broke my I don't know how many lifetimes I've been hanging on and hanging on and hanging on. In this experience, I finally got it. This world is not my world. You know, this, it, 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 and as Dunya say, and I'm not saying that this is what you go up and immediately start to tell the person, um, but, but this is how we're meant to grow through tragedy. And, and ideally when we're old and wrinkled and, and nearing the end, 
we've let go of everything and we're feeling a sense of gratitude. It's kind of like a, <laughs> you know, it's, it can be kind of like a, uh, it's a flavor that's not entirely sweet, at least until it's complete. Mm. But, but it's like, I get it. I, get, you know, I it's get an it. exhaustive I'm, like release. Like I've been climbing up this mountain yeah, trying to yeah. keep my material body together forever. Ah, oh. it broke me down and I'm yeah. glad it did. Yeah. I, 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 it, and so, yeah, so, you know, that, that what, what we learned through this is that, and I, and I think Dunya spoke to this too, that how delicate life is or, or really how delicate our material circumstances are. And our faith that life itself or the, or the spirit is is anything but delicate right is 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 indestructible and these experiences are that bunsen burner that's heating up the theory you know uh so that it becomes deeply 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 realized um we all have to go through these difficult things in one way or another and this is an exceptionally you know it's an exceptional, exceptional experience of tragedy. Um, so, so as Bhakti Yogis, we, we, we want to gain that insight. We want to gain that ability to, to grow through it, to, to, to all of these painful experiences being our impetus to let go. Um, and um, and we want to be there for our friends when they're going through it, um, as well. And and so we're steady, we're steady in our friendship. As Danya was saying, we're there even if it's just to be a shoulder to cry on, if it's to give space, if if the time comes, it's to speak our thoughts and our realizations when when we know that that person wants to hear them, and is ready to hear them. Um, it's it's challenging, but. Uh, Ideally, we have a nice community, and, and, and whoever uh, this this couple was, that they have uh, Patrick as a friend. Uh, that they're they're fortunate in that sense. Hmm. I like the idea of without the spiritual knowledge, it just be life just becomes devastating. It's just one devastating oh, yeah. thing after another. I patch this one up, and then there's another devastating thing. Oh, oh and then tragedy hits, and then oh, there's some up. <laughs> up, up, up. <laughs> There's something goes up for a second and it's all tragic. Well, you, you it's know, all coming out tragic in the end, the, unless the, we add some spiritual wisdom. And then it's like what Patrick says. And then it could be the biggest boost for yeah. your spiritual life. Well, one thing that Patrick mentioned that we didn't speak to is doesn't this storyline appear many times throughout the Vedas and the Bhagavatam? And, and there are many stories of a child being lost or something like that. The, uh, the, maybe the one that he was thinking of, the one that came to my mind first was Chitra Ketu. Oh, yeah. We're, which we're approaching now in the sixth canto. It's a good one. Yeah. And he, you know, he had many wives. He had great kingly opulence, power. Um, he had materially, he had what everybody was supposed to make you happy. Spoiler alert here. <laughs> but he He's had about one thing. To tell the story. Well, I'm going to tell the whole story. But he had one thing that, that he, um, that, that just the way that he says it, is he like he says just like if you're if you're really hungry or thirsty really suffering from hunger or thirst and someone comes and puts a flower garland on you <laughs> you know oh, right. put some sandalwood paste some fragrant sandalwood paste on you it doesn't satisfy you at all those things might be satisfying if everything else was right but because you have great hunger or thirst the, the, the flower garland is meaningless to you and he said all of my kingly opulence all of my beautiful wives all of my wealth all my power all of my influence it doesn't satisfy me at all because i don't have a son and so you know they went through the rituals and then they had and then his wife became pregnant and it was the sage augustia that arranged everything that created you know that went helped him walk through the rituals to for this um conception to take place but then the, the sage said this son will be both harsha and shoka for you it will be harsha will bring jubilation into your life but shoka will also bring lamentation to your life harsha and in the moment he couldn't he couldn't quite process it he was just in such jubilation 
he said, oh, okay, maybe my son will be a little disobedient or something like that and it'll cause some lamentation. But it's like, no, what, what happened was he lost that son very quickly, you know, in a tragic way. And, but th this is the nature of the material world, harsha, shoka, harsha, shoka. And it's, and it's these trials that we go through in our life. We don't get it. We tend to not get it unless we go through this. And therefore we feel the gratitude because we wouldn't have gotten it otherwise. We're out of time. Are we already? Wait, Pat, yeah, that went fast. Wait, Patrick's going to jump back in here. He's got some inspiration. Okay. Hi, Patrick. I just want to say thank you. Um, I saw the family yesterday and they're extremely strong. You know, and we, we did, yeah. we sat, we laughed, we cried, we talked. Um, and one of the things the mom said was that she, she doesn't want this to just not be talked about. So mm. to have your responses, to have your, the blessings of this community, the prayers of this, the wisdom of the sages community is extremely meaningful. These are, they're on a devotional path. These are bhakti yogi people okay. that come to my kirtans every week. Oh, wow. They're an integral part of the community. So I just want to extend a heartfelt thank you to your responses and the prayers from this community. Thank you, Patrick. Patrick. Well, that seems like the show for today. Hi, Miss Mara. How are you? Hey, this mayor's back. <laughs> mayor's back. Uh, um, so we're doing this t tomorrow too. Q and A tomorrow, live, live. We've got a whole great group here at the farm. Ah, and we wanted to say wisdomofstages.com. Check it out. We've got a wisdom of stages retreat coming up at the fall foliage. The seasons are changing. It's Indigenous Peoples Day weekend. It's a long weekend. <laughs> we invite you up here. Mika Stupid Mayor will be here. Um, we're trying to like uh, squeeze some vegan meatballs out of Mara. Tell <laughs> them how to sign up. <laughs> Go to to sign up. And um, and uh, next weekend with Lori Pag, we're doing. Uh, There's still some space available, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Go to the, my website, Yoga. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, Danya. Thanks to the live. Welcome. Thanks to all the questions. Check out this crew, everybody. Nice crew. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Get the chef. Oh, oh, there they are. There. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks to Danya. Right. Let's get Danya. Thanks to Danya for joining us. Having Danya and Bali in there. Always oh, such there. clear, really clear thought, clear reasoning, She's insightful clear answers. It's her, her mind's like, you can just tell it's peaceful. And, uh, and, but also well informed, you know? And well informed. Yes. Uh, yep. Similar to mine. <laughs> Just what I was thinking. Yes. Well informed. <laughs> Why is everybody laughing? That's the weird thing. Uh, we got a big crowd from all over. We got a bunch of kids here. Gumi and friends from California. We got some Spurgites, Ashley O'Hara and her. Anderson's here with Baby Mila. Got Scott Moss up here. Got Rhode Island here. Got David Murray and Henry here from DC. We got some Virginians here. We got a. We even got. Um, uh, house arrest. We got house arrest's wife here. And we've got, a, <laughs> believe it or not, we have three completely dental retreat one of these days. We're working up. We got three. We're working on like ten. I'm, I'm raising the bar next time. Only dentist, bhakti and dentistry, is going to be the theme. We've done, you know, you know, people do yoga, surf retreats. Why not bhakti dentistry? That's where we're at. Thanks, Can everybody. We for a teeth cleaning? Yeah, maybe we should, there's a teeth cleaning workshop coming up. And uh, anyway, it's a beautiful day for Oral people. Oral hygiene today. in general. Let the magic continue to flow.